Hey, welcome to Ekidel.com, where future leaders come to improve their knowledge. Okay, after creating our Cantilever slab, the next thing we will have to do is to insert story. Now, looking at this, this is just, we, we only have one story upward. Now, because of our Cantilever, you can see that some of the columns, when we insert our story, that is the story one, the first floor, this column will be terminated on the ground floor. So we will have to delete and shift this column from this area down to this area. Like I said, this is a practical base training. So all the columns having the color of magenta will not extend to the roof. While all other columns will extend to the roof. All other columns with green color will extend to the roof. But the columns having magenta will not extend to the roof. It will terminate on the slab because it is um, is not um, because of the cantilever that we have, so it will have to terminate on the ground floor. So now let's go back going back to quota structure. Now many many people like to insert story once they are done with their modeling, but for me, I am not done with my modeling until just as it is um, when you're doing your when, when you're performing your structural design manually. You know, at this area, we will have to obey the fixed end or the pin end or the roller support and all that. So I always obey the fixed end and the pin end condition. So at this area, I, I, I always hinge, you know, moment at, at an end must be zero. So this is a continuous beam. This is a, this is a continuous beam. So the moment here must be zero and the moment at this place because there is no beam continuing on this area. So right now, as it is right now, they are all fixed. They are all fixed conditions. All the ends of the beams are fixed conditions. So I always like to introduce a hinge, knowing that moment at an end must be zero. Most people don't do this, but like I said, this is a practical base. I always like doing it. So I'll quickly right click on this beam. I'll click on this beam, right click, and say update beam end condition. The left end, which is this side that, that I want to apply my end condition, saying there is no moment on that area, that moment there is zero. So I will say end hinge at left, which is the left. When you hinge, you will see the symbol circle. The circle will show showing that the moment at that place is zero. Telling you that that place does not have moment and that place is is having a hinge support. I'll quickly um, say apply to selected beams. You can see there. So the moment here on this continuous beam at on this continuous beam at this end is equals to zero. So I'll also do the same thing here. So this is a continuous beam. So so the moment at this upper end is zero. So I'll quickly right click and say right end in in a, in product structure the upper side of your screen is called the j end the down side is called the i end and the right hand side of your screen is called the j end and the left hand side of your screen is called the i end so right now i want to hinge the up upper side of this beam so i'll if I, if I click and say beam end condition i'll click on j and say apply to, select, to selected beams you can see so right now the moment at this place at this beam end is zero at this beam end is zero so i'll do the same for all the same thing happens here now at this end now this is a simply supported beam because it have both ends this uh, this continuum so at this point now the, the moment here is equal to zero moment here is equal to zero so i'll quickly right click click on the beam and right click up and then uh, Beam, update the end condition and say both ends. Okay. Now, the reason why I do this is because most people don't do it. Most people just say, okay, I want to leave it that way and just go ahead. The reason why I do this is because when you, when you do this, you know, when we design, when, when we perform our social design, we look at one, the stability and also the cost. So when you do this, you're invariably reducing the, the quantity of reinforcement that we would have, that this beam would have taken on this end. You know that if this place like this beam now that is meant to be and to to be hinged if we leave it right now as a fixed end 
it, it will going to have a tree, either a higher diameter, of, um, a higher number of reinforcement on the upper, um, on the on the compression side or the tension side of the of the beam. But if we assign the beam end condition, knowing that this end is is um, is not continuing, is 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 not continuing, and the end is zero, and we apply the beam end condition as this end to be zero, automatically the quantity of reinforcement that we would have needed on this area of the beam we reduce indirectly you are reducing cost for for your client and also the cost of the of um, of erecting the project so i'll quickly um do this end conditions for all okay so and also the area of stability okay so this is how you apply your beam end condition your fixed and your um your hinge end. So this side now, this beam now, at this area, we have a hinge end at this beam and a hinge end at this beam. But coming to this beam right now, this beam, this is a fixed end and this is a fixed end because it's a it it it, it has a continuity. So the so the so the so the moment at this area we have to come if you if I want to draw the moment diagram of this area right now, you will see that it, it will come like this and rise a bit because it's a fixed end so it must have a moment rise and go down again go again rise and go down again then it goes and comes back to zero okay so this is how you apply your beam end condition thank you